Bard Rock Cafe is brought to you by SassyGamers.com and viewers like you. Links to Sassy Gamers, our Patreon, and our social media accounts can be found in the show notes. Previously on Bard Rock Cafe, the campaign started with a bang as the Bard Rock was destroyed in the heat of the moment. Rook the Rogue discovered the object that destroyed the Bard Rock was some sort of strange obelisk covered in runes. Brock the Bard found strength no one thought he had, lifting debris and helping patrons escape the fire. Epi, the acolyte of the Raven Queen, was even able to raise the dead. Why can't the clergy heal anymore? Will Brock remain homeless? Find out today on Bard Rock Cafe! Welcome to episode two. We're going to start off with Brock. Brock, you wake up in the castle district. You have guest quarters in the Blackstaff's Tower. You do roll over, and you find, kind of perched in your windowsill, a very familiar face. It's Felix. He seems to have been watching you sleep. What are you doing here? I was trying to wake you up. You are a very heavy sleeper, my friend. Cough. Tea. Tea. I need tea. You need tea. I'm certain that the Blackstaff can accommodate you. Listen, what are you going to do about the Bard Rock Cafe? I need it to conduct my business. I be insurance day. The guilds fix it. Ah. And I actually get up and try and find like a teapot to pour myself a cup of tea so I can wake up. Well, I don't know how much experience you have dealing with the guilds, but if I were you, I would perhaps start with the Guild of Innkeepers. All right, I, uh, do I find my tea kettle or whatever? You, uh, you have only the possessions with you that you had when you left the Bard Rock Cafe. All right, I, uh, I'm, I... Uh, one of the staff and mutter something about tea and then I try and shake myself awake a little bit and I say yeah I'm, I, I'll do that I will go see them after I have some breakfast very good and you watch as Felix hops out of the window which is remarkable because the guest quarters are on the fourth story uh, I go to the window and look to see if I can see where he, where he went uh, he is in a free fall he does not seem concerned. I watch to see what, how his landing goes. He gets about ten feet up from the ground, and his fall seems to slow dramatically, and he just drifts down to the ground on his feet, and he just casually strolls away. I, I golf clap his landing. He is four stories down and does not hear your golf clap, sir. I use prestidigitation so that he can hear the golf clap at the bottom. <laughs> he stops. Kind of perks his ears up a little bit. And glances over his shoulder, and then keeps walking away. He seems slightly peeved that you dared watch him fall instead of leave the mystery a mystery. Uh, you do hear a knock at your door, and there is a, a young butler with some tea. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name, sir. Ah, oh, my name is Jeebs. It's a pleasure to serve. Thank you very much, Jeebs. If you need anything else, uh, please don't hesitate to make your way down to the first floor cafeteria. No, uh, thank you very much. And I pour myself a cup of tea, and uh, I sit down whatever furniture I have available to me to drink a cup of tea and wake up for the morning. Sure, so you have like a little, one of those little hotel, like, single chair and like the tiny table. You sit down and you have a cup of tea. All right, and uh, if there if there's no other uh, eventfulness for the morning, I'd go grab some breakfast and then head over to the guilds to deal with my insurance. Okay, so you make your way over to the guild hall of the Fellowship of Innkeepers, of which you are a member. You walk in the front door, you see a very professional-looking gnome filing papers behind a desk that is entirely too big for her. Uh, uh, hello, I I think you should have an appointment today, uh, Broxon. What? 
Uh, I'm Brock Song. I'm the owner of the uh, Bard Rock Cafe. Uh, I, fi- I filed some papers last night before you all closed about uh, my cafe kind of burned down. Oh, you're the one from the, the meteor strike. Yes, yes. I heard all about that. That sounded so crazy. Were you inside when it hit? Yes, yes I was. I was actually buried in rubble. It was quite unpleasant. That's insane. I'm so happy you made it out alive. I'm so sorry to hear about your inn. So, you said you had an appointment. Let me get the book out. And, like, you see her, like, struggling with a book that's... So, like, gnomes are three feet tall. Okay? So, like, she comes up maybe to, like, your your waist or your thigh. And, like, she's, like, trying to push this book up onto the, the, the counter. And then she climb, climbs a stool and is standing on top of it. Opens the book. Right. You said your name is Brock Song. Brock Song. Brock Song. Brock. Nope. No appointment. Uh, there must be some mistake. I filed my paperwork. Is, uh, is there somebody I can speak to about getting an appointment today? Uh, certainly. Here is an appointment form and also a request for expedition form. She hands you two forms. It's like, now if you'll have a seat over there, we'll be right with you as soon as the forms are filled out. You'll just have to get back in line. And you do see a line slowly starting to form. All right, yes, I, I set up the side and I say, uh, uh, I am of the Waterdeep songs. <laughs> no. No. Uh, you also notice, like, everybody else in the line kind of gives you the stink eye when you say that. Uh, I'm sorry, my home burned down yesterday. I'm sorry, I'm in a, not in a particularly good mood. My apologies. And I step aside and go fill up my uh, paperwork. One guy, this burly looking dude, steps up to you and he's like, I have a rat infestation in my cellar, and I have been trying to get it taken care of for weeks, so excuse me if I don't have any sympathy for your problems. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so glad that you at least have a home. So congratulations on that. He takes a step forward and, like, he dwarfs you. Like, you have hired muscle, he is the muscle. He says, why don't you take a seat and fill out your paperwork and then get back in line. No, I was doing that, sir. I was just reminding you to count your blessings, because, you know, at the very least, you know, you do have a home. I'm sorry to hear about your rats. Everyone, please calm down. I would hate to have someone thrown out. And the man just kind of, like, stiffens and then goes back in line. She's like, no, no, no. Back up the line. You lost your spot. And, like, he is now red in the face and makes his way to the back of the line. Said, Next. And, like, the line continues to... Move forward as you fill out the paperwork. I mean, I fill out the paperwork and get back in line. Okay. So, roughly 35 minutes later, you make your way back up to the front of the line. Oh, good, you're back. Did you fill out your paperwork? Yes, it's right here. I think you'll find everything is in order. She checks it over real quick. Yes, everything's in order. All right. So, here's the deal. We don't have any appointments open today. So, uh, I will submit your request for expedition form and we'll get back to you within one business day about your appointment. Alright, and is there, is there any sort of, uh, like, way I can wait and if there's any sort of cancellation or if anyone finishes early, maybe I can just speak to someone briefly? Certainly! If you would like to take your place over there in the waiting area, if there is a cancellation, we will put you on our waiting list. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, like, I have nowhere else to be. I lost my home yesterday, so. I under- I understand. I'm so sorry to hear about that. I'll do everything in my power to help you, I promise. Next! Yep, and without causing any more trouble, I just go to wherever he told me to go wait. She told me to go wait. Okay, so you will be there for a while. Yep, and also, uh, and unless someone objects otherwise, I'm going to just very quietly play a tune on the flute to kind of, like, hopefully ease the tensions of everybody waiting in the line. Roll me a performance. That is a 15 plus... Uh, I, so I'm, pro- I'm proficient, so it is plus 5, right? Plus 3 for my charisma, and then plus 2 for my proficiency? That's correct. That is a dirty 20. Okay. People seem to appreciate the tune... So nobody asks you to stop. Uh, do I have an eye on the guy who, like, I royally made mad earlier? So he has made his way off to the side on another end, and he has about seven different forms that he is filling out. All right. Uh, can I actually? Uh, can I actually? 
him and say, uh, excuse me, sir, I actually, I, I'm sorry about earlier, but uh, I'm actually very familiar with this paperwork. If you like, I can help you fill some of it out. Maybe that can speed up your process. He kind of stops and he looks you over once real quick, make a persuasion roll. Uh, that is a nine plus five is 14. It says, no, we're fine, but uh, I'll do my own paperwork. Sorry about your house. Th thank you, I appreciate it. Like I said, I was just in re I'm just in a really emotional state. I didn't mean to cause trouble earlier. And, you know, if you do need help with anything, uh, you know, please feel free to ask. And once my cafe is fixed, stop by the Bard Rock Cafe and you'll get your first drink will be on me. And I offer him a handshake. He kind of, there's this long, heavy pause where he's like, right. And he does shake your hand and it's, as you would expect, it is a very, very, very strong handshake. And then he goes back to doing his forms. All right, and then I go back to the waiting area, satisfied that I have quelled this uh, potential conflict, and just go resume playing my flute. Okay. So, Effie, where did you go for the night? Where do I normally go for the night? Do I have, like, a place? I don't actually know. I assume I have a place. You typically rent a room from a tavern or an inn. Uh, you don't have a permanent residence. You just have a lot of places that you would go to crash for the night. I think I would like to go to a place to crash for the night that is a bit off the beaten path, if there is one that is kind of that option. Sure. So you go... Give me one second. You go to a tavern called the Mermaid's Arms. It is right on the dock line. You have a nice view of the ships that are docked at the, the dock, and you crash there. Over the course of the night, um, I am going to check everything, make sure there's not any like weird crap in my room or people peep in or something. Then I'm gonna take out my little book and start writing in it. Okay. So Epi, you begin writing in your book. I take out just, you know, regular pen, regular quill. And I start writing in the book, Mortimer, what in the actual hell just happened there? That explosion did not have, like, anything that felt like an explosion. After a moment, the ink fades into the page, and then reappears with different words. I have no idea. I'm going to scribble in there. So, so, do you think if I snuck out, I'd be able to get in there and maybe get a look at that thing? I, I, I'm so curious. I want to know. I imagine the guard probably has it blocked off. Epi just kind of sits there and thinks for a minute. And with a snap of his fingers, writes in the book, I could use Alter Self. I could look like a member of the guard. Do you think they'd let me in? I think you're going to try it either way. He kind of giggles and writes, Absolutely. And I am going to um, fold up my cloak and put it in the bedroll so it looks like there's someone in there. You know, arrange the pillows, all that good stuff. Sure. And then um, I think I'm going to uh, quote unquote make my way to a bathroom or just do something where I walk outside for a bit. Okay. I mean, nobody really pays you any mind. There's some drunk sailors downstairs. Perfect. And I think uh, whenever I am someplace where there aren't any prying eyes that I can see, I think it'd be an excellent time to cast Alter Self and you just watch as um, this tiefling man enters a back alley and out comes a, like, 5'11 human man with a beard and, you know, pale skin, brown hair, all the good stuff. You might mistake this person for a human guard. And I make my way back to the Bard Rock Cafe. And the City Watch does have green and gold as their colors. Green capes with a gold uh, trim around the edge and gold badges that identify them for who they are. Perfect. So you make your way back to the Bard Rock Cafe. Uh, there is, you know, some light. There are some guards positioned around. They don't seem to be too worried about keeping people out. It is still very early morning. So that's not a whole lot of activity. Okay, I'm going to go walk around towards the back. Okay, are you 
trying to be stealthy or are you just walking over there? I am going to just, you know, regularly walk over there. I may nod to the guards, kind of, you know, yawn like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm totally here to cover someone's shift, you know. Yeah. Guard nods back, doesn't seem too suspicious. Once I'm in the back, do I see a way in? Alright, so you would know that the Bard Rock Cafe does have a cellar. There is an entrance to that cellar off to the side, kind of behind the bushes. Uh, typically it's locked, probably still is right now. You also know that there is a giant hole in the floor. Uh, most of the structure itself was burned severely and there's several... You could enter from just about any side at this point. Is there a particular hole somewhere that doesn't seem to have anybody looking at it right now? You find a hole that seems safe enough to enter. Not too much trouble. Okay, I'd like to peek inside, see if there's anybody on the inside, and if not, I'm gonna go in. There does seem to be a single magister that is uh, looking down into the hole. Then I think that I'm going to knock and then come in to get the magister's attention. Uh, the magister does kind of perk up, turns and looks at you and goes, Hmm, yes, what do you need? Guardsman. I wave and I I walk over and I'm like, So, sir, I was sent to um, get a, a status update. Have you have you found anything? Is there anything you would like me to send back in a report? He kind of squints at you. Did you just wave, guardsman? Epi just sort of, uh, you know, he, he looks, he steps back. He's like, my apologies, sir. Salutes. All the, the normal stuff he has seen the guards do. He's like, it's very early in the morning. I, I am sorry for my familiarity. The Magister squints even squintier. You need a report. Who is asking for this report? Epi, uh, thinks for a minute. He's just like, oh goodness, I'm so sorry. I... I started not too long ago, but I, I've just started in the in the castle district. I got sent from the Black Staffs. Uh, something about basically the owner. He's a he keeps asking questions. Something to calm him down. I am so sorry. I it's my first day. You know, I was actually you know I, this is this is my first job. Uh, if you have any recommendations, I, I just got out of the the training. Right. And he just kind of rubs his temples. Look, obviously you're out of your depth here. I am here to do magical study. I have no interest in how upset the owner of this inn is. If he needs calming down, rest assured that we will be out of his hair shortly and reconstruction on his cafe can begin very soon. Now please leave me to my studies. Epi nods and just kind of goes over to look and he's like, I'll, I'll try and stay out of your way and can I get a glance down into the hole at all? It's fine if he sees. He kind of, he, he takes a step closer and is squinting right and like right in your face. What's your name, guardsman? Oh, um, my, my apologies, sir. My name is Kevin. Kevin, roll me a deception check. <laughs> I'm sure this will be fine. Oh my god, I rolled a 22 with bonuses. He, there is a heavy pause as he just kind of takes your measure. He says, Kevin. Yes, sir? Get out. Right away, sir. And I, I turn and I, uh, I walk out back through that hole I came in. Okay, he watches you the whole way. <laughs> and he is, it is, the suspicion is written all over his face, but he's letting it go. Did my brief glance in the hole garner any information? <laughs> you, uh, were not able to get close enough to the hole. Dang it. Uh, I guess it's time to look for a, uh, go check and see if that lock's still there. Okay, uh... You know, outside, you make your way around, nobody pays you much mind, you find the, the stellar entrance, it does seem to be locked. Can I see through a crack at all in the in the cellar doors? You want to peek in through the cellar door? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Every single part of the structure is destroyed except this one locked door. It's fine. Well, so the door is on the, the, door is on the western side of the cafe, the meteor hit the eastern half of the cafe. So, but wasn't it coming from the west? 
it it shot over the door is what I'm guessing has happened. Yeah. Yeah. So like Okay. The door is literally in the ground, like you open it upwards. It's a cellar door. So sure, you can peek in. Go ahead and roll perception. Uh that's a solid nine. Okay. So you don't see anything, but you also have a brief flash of self awareness that you are now a guardsman peeking into a locked door. And it does look a little suspicious. You do see another one of the guardsmen kind of looking at you, and he starts to make his way over to you. <laughs> I stand up at attention. I'm like, I'm... Hello. <laughs> guardsman, what are you doing here? I was, I was sent to relieve one of the guardsmen that were here, and I'm sorry, sir. I, my curiosity got the better of me. <laughs> are you looking for him through the door, guardsman? No, sir. I, I'm very sorry. I just... Who are... Guardsman. Who are you here to relieve? Um, I am so sorry. I, I just started, but I believe he was posted at the back. I, I'm very sorry, sir. My curiosity got the better of me. Roll me deception. Dang it. <laughs> okay. Shiny dice don't fail me now. Okay. That is a dirty 20. <laughs> I rolled a 17. Okay. The guardsman at the back is guardsman Kevin. Ah. Kevin! And you see the guardsman that's out back behind the, the cafe. You're being relieved. But I just got here, sir. I know. Guardsman. Yes, sir. And he's talking to you now, Epi. What is your name? My name is Kevin, but it is spelled with a Y. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy! I know, right? <laughs> it's the Kevin Squad! We're, look, look, protecting the city. You rely on Kevin. You hear the most world-weary sigh <laughs> from the other guardsmen. <laughs> says, this reeks of a mix-up at the station. Kevin, you are free to go. Kevin, take Kevin's spot. Yes, sir. I'm going to have a drink. And he makes his way back to his post. Excellent. I'm going to go relieve Kevin of his post. What is Kevin's post? <laughs> he is behind the cafe. You saw him when you were creeping around. Fair enough. Good. This lasts up to an hour. Um. <laughs> it did take you about 15 minutes to get here, so you do still have the bulk of that time left. Is there anything I can really see from the back at my new Kevin post? You see the remains of the Bard Rock Cafe. Uh, you do, you are able to make your way to that opening in the back and see inside, but again, you can't really see down in the hole. Fair enough. Are there any other guards posted out back? Just you. Okay, okay. I think I'm gonna stay there for, you know, you know, I gotta, I gotta do right by Kevin. I'm going to stay there at my post. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. So, where are the guards going to the bathroom, since I imagine the chamber pot area in the Bard Rock is not in good condition? And how, like, she's got 45 minutes, maybe the guy watching the hole just needs to hit the head at some point. So, Waterdeep does have public restrooms. They are every once in a while, but it's basically like little stations, because Waterdeep does have a sewer, and working plumbing. But also, it has been less than an hour. <laughs> and these are guardsmen. But, so you're holding this post for how long, Kathy? Um, I'm gonna stick around for, you know, at least 30 minutes, seeing if there's any opportunity for me to, you know, maybe go back by that door again without anyone getting too suspicious, but we'll see. We'll see what people do in those 30 minutes. Okay. About 20 minutes in, uh, you hear the, the magister make his way out the what's, what's left of the front door. And he says, I need to get into the cellar. Can you open the door for me? And you hear the guard that you talked with earlier go, yes, yes, come on. 
and then making their way around to the side, and you hear the rattle of the chain as it is unlocked, and the cellar door is opened. Excellent. I think now would be a, a very good time. Is there anybody in within seeing distance of me that could see what I'm doing? Roll perception. That's an 11 plus two, a solid 13. You don't see anybody. Okay. I think I am going to uh, <clears throat> use the bathroom, quote unquote. Okay. And uh, once I uh, go to the bathroom to relieve myself, I think it's time to uh, find a familiar to help me out. Oh, okay. that's a long casting time. Hang on. <laughs> you, there's a casting time of one hour. Yeah. I will let you do it. You will just be occupying that public restroom <laughs> for a considerable time. I think um, I may go with a slightly different approach. <laughs> I would like to... Um, okay, so the thing about it is um, Alter stealth Self is concentration. So would I be able to cast another spell while maintaining that? So long as it is not also a concentration spell. Perfect. I think it's time to pull out that little bit of wood with the, the string that's just tied around it. I whisper a few words and you watch the string coil back up. And um, using my lovely little telepathic connection with my unseen servant, I think I'm going to have him walk in after them if it's still open. Sure. Okay. I'd like to send my unseen servant down there. Okay. Uh, where are you while your servant is going down? Still in the bathroom, or you come back to your post? I think I should come back to my post, you know, just so I can be close within 60 feet of my uncertain seen servant. Okay. Uh, and what is your servant ordered to do? He is ordered, if at all possible, to prop the door open after they leave. Or unlock it from the inside. Okay, so he is able to do so. Roll me a d100. Oh, boy, I get the first one. You do. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Whew, 72. I <laughs> think things are about to get a little wild in here. Yes. All right. So, you now have five unseen servants. Four of them are going in random directions, and you seem to have no control over what they do. I'm sure it's fine. Are they about to run into anything and or anyone? Well, they're unseen, so you don't know. Fair enough. Do you wait? I think, um... Let's see. If at all possible, since, you know, I'm having a bit of an unseen problem here, uh, before I get back to my post, let's see. Okay, good. It's a bonus action. So I saw in to the cellar when I peeked in, right? Yeah, you saw the stairs leading down. Uh, perhaps it's time to, um, before I do that, I'm going to tell my unseen servant to open and slam the door to the cellar. Okay, he does so. You also notice about 20 feet off to the side, door to one of the local shops is now opening and slamming as well. <laughs> The front door of the Bard Rock Cafe is also opening and slamming shut. The door to one of the residents' houses is rattling violently, and you notice directly in front of you, the restroom's door is opening and slamming shut. I'm gonna try and hide my grin while the magistrate decides to figure out what he, what's happening. Oh yeah, so everybody's on high alert right now. Oi, what's going on? The magistrate says, someone's using magic. And you see that he has well, actually, no, you don't. You don't see shit. He's in the cellar. <laughs> but, it says, Someone has cast magic. Fan out and find whoever's around here. I am going to join them in fanning out. Okay. Uh, the door in front of you is opening and slamming shut. I am going to, um... Or, I'm going to tell one of the guards, You go, go tell them that, um... So the, the, this door is enchanted too. I'm gonna go check by my post, make sure there's nothing going on, and I'm gonna How do go you get out of the bathroom? Out towards the bathroom. Oh. Oh, I'm still in the bathroom, oh god. Oh yes. You said you were still in there. That's true. I am still in the bathroom. 
I'm going to tell, or is anybody, you know, I assume people are looking at the bathroom. Oh yeah, they're looking at all the doors that are opening and shutting. And you feel, you feel one of your invisible servants, or unseen servants, dissipate. Oh. I am going to tell the one that is by the magistrate, trip him. It's gone. Oh, crap. I'm going to tell one of my other ones. To trip the magistrate? Yeah, to trip the magistrate. The doors, in unison, stop opening and shutting. As all four remaining unseen servants make their way to the magistrate. I'm sure this will be fine. I'm going to get out of the bathroom in a bolt and be like, Did you see that? What's going on? That's like, I don't know! What's happening? I don't know, man. They didn't cover this in basic. Oh, I just want to say really quick, they didn't cover it in basic, but they probably did cover it in C++. <laughs> uh, that was terrible, and I loved uh, you, it. <laughs> you see four magical bolts fly out of the cellar and strike each of your unseen servants, and they all poof out of existence. And the magistrate comes up. His spell book is out. He has a crystal orb in his hand. And he's looking around saying, all right, something's going on. And he stops, and he looks dead at you. I'll fan out, sir, and I'm booking it. Stop him! He cast magic! <laughs> and all the guards are now chasing you. Uh, I am going to be like, I am going to be like, I'm going to turn around and look behind me. I'll get him for you, sir, and I'm booking it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, roll... You just sprinting down the street? Yeah. Or I'm trying to sprint, you know, and look in alleyways or run into an alleyway if I see anything, quote unquote. Okay. So you're running away. You hear the guards running after you. You hear whistles now as they are chasing you. Okay. Uh, and they heard me answered, know I'm after. An hang on. Okay. Answered by whistles further down the street and then even further away. So you get the sense that the city guard know that someone is being chased right now. Did it look like they were buying it? I don't think they were buying it. Not even a little bit. Excellent. And I'm just gonna be like, alright, you caught me. And I am going to just snap my fingers and Silver Mist is going to envelop me and I'm going to poof away as best I can. Okay, where do you poof away to? Where is the... Okay, so it was a place I could see, right? Yes. Are any of them still in the cellar? No, they're all out of the cellar. Do I remember the stairs I saw in the cellar, and does that count for this? I'll allow it. Excellent. So you poof onto the stairs? Yes. Okay. Roll me a stealth check. Oh boy, I'm sure this will be fun. Alright. Tiny dice. I believe in you, tiny dice. You got this, tiny pink dice. Okay. So that is a 15 plus a 1, that's a 16. Okay. I also need another d100 roll. Oh boy. <laughs> It's gonna be fun. That's a solid 40. <laughs> okay. Choose another location within 30 feet. <laughs> another location within 30 feet? Yes, you are on the stairs in the cellar. Choose another location that you can see within 30 feet. Is there any place in there that looks extremely well hidden, like people couldn't see it or something? Like, I'm in there for three seconds. What do I see? <laughs> Rubble. You see barrels of whiskey. You see wine racks. You see the you do see the obelisk now, which probably catches your eye more than anything else. Well, I think I may uh, have to teleport to the obelisk. Okay, you are now directly next to the obelisk. Okay, and since everyone is looking for <clears throat> Kevin, with a Y, I'm dropping Alter Self. Okay, sure. For the moment, they don't seem to be looking in the cellar. Excellent. What can I see for this brief moment in the cellar? You see... The obelisk with the pointed top pierced three feet into the ground. You see that it is made of what looks to be obsidian. There are deep cracks all through it. And there are slightly glowing golden symbols or writing or something all around. Not the face, but the pointed part of it that goes up. Can I read it? What languages do you speak? Common, infernal, and abyssal. You cannot. Dang. Uh, from my quick studies, what... Like, you know, this was clearly magic. I'm going I'm going to write the, the symbols into my book as quickly as I can. As best I can. How long do you spend doing this? 
I'm going to kind of keep an eye out on the door, but I'm going to ride as many as I can before I think they're heading back towards the cellar. Because I got to hide if they... You have about a good 20 to 30 seconds, and then you see a guard... You see that someone has made their way to the entrance of the cellar and is coming down. Okay. It is time to hide at... I am dressed entirely in black. Maybe I can hide behind one of these giant wine barrels and nobody will see me, because... I'm not that big in my real form. Okay. Roll a stealth check. Whew. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Gold dice, you're up. Okay. 15 plus 1 is 16. Okay. We'll come back to you. <laughs> so, Rook. Yes. Where did, where did you crash for the night? Rook decided to crash at the brothel where her mom used to work. She'd never want to admit it, even to the women inside, but seeing that cafe in flames kind of did end up freaking her out a little bit. Okay. So she stayed the night and uh, woke up groggy the next morning. Okay. So as you make your way out first thing in the morning, Okay, I say first thing. When about do you think Rook would wake up? Rook would wake up... Rook is not an early riser. Rook does things at night, most of the time, so... Almost afternoon morning. Okay, so you make your way out. Uh, you're still in the docks district. Mm -hmm. There is a town crier in a square that is just down the road. Mm -hmm. He has some interesting things to say. I'm listening. The gods are silent. Clerics lose their casting. The faithful are losing faith. All clerics everywhere. No healing, no resurrection, no amount of offering seems to get the attention of the gods. What could be happening? No one knows. The open lord has begun an open investigation into the cause of this. And then after that, a meteor has struck in the docks district, obliterating the Bard Rock Cafe. Officials have yet to give a statement, but Vajra Safar, the black staff, was cited personally investigating. No word yet on how many casualties or if there are any survivors. And then moving on. The traitor Saren is still at large. An open bounty has been given for his arrest, dead or alive. And he goes on and he keeps talking about the news of the day. Autugs have gotten loose in the sewers. People are encouraged to limit their waste and water usage in the lower docks district. A bounty is posted for any who would deal with that problem. And he goes on, healing supplies going missing as clerics are unable to perform their spells. Healing potions and healing supplies are in now high demand. Anyone with extra is encouraged to report to the nearest temple. You will be compensated. And he starts to repeat what he said. Rook thinks to herself, I have two ways of doing things. I can try and see if I could take care of a sewer problem, not really the type of thing that Rook likes to do. Or I could try and help with medical supplies. I mean, someone's gonna want me to go get some for them. I should probably talk to Felix. And so Rook thinks about it for a second. Also, she did notice that the crier said no survivors, which is roll eyes very pathetic for Rook. Because, well, he or she was right there. Um, but she didn't feel like correcting anybody. So, just so, a quick note. I don't know if I made a mistake. It was no word on survivors or casualties. Oh, okay. So, Rook just still doesn't feel like giving anyone the word or telling anybody anything about anything. Rook would rather go about her business or try to take her mind off of what happened yesterday, honestly. Or maybe take advantage of it. So, she wonders where Felix is today. Is it possible for me to track him? Like, would I know where he is? So Felix, to the best of your recollection, took up the Blackstaff on her offer of housing people in the castle district. And you imagine he would probably be at the Blackstaff's tower somewhere. Blackstaff's Tower. That's an interesting place I might, you know, it's interesting for many reasons. 
I might as well make my way over there. Is the castle district easy to get into for anybody? It is more heavily guarded, being as how that is where the actual barracks for the city are. But it's not restricted travel. You can get there. This is the government district. There's not a whole lot of citizenry there. Rook just wants to get in there uh, inconspicuously. So she's just going to try and walk through the least guarded entrance to the castle district. Okay. I mean, there's an entrance to the castle district not too, too far from the Bard Rock Cafe. Um, it does actually rub up against the docks district. So you say it's near the Bard Rock Cafe as well? You can, you can get there from the Bard Rock Cafe. So I think it might be... So if that's the case, Rook will take a look at what the cafe looks like for a sec before making her way onto the castle district. So at your point in the day... Uh, the guards have been increased a little bit from an event that happened the previous night, but it's it's pretty destroyed. Is there so um is this before or after Epi's adventure? <laughs> so you're seeing the results several hours after Epi's adventure. Okay, I thought so. Okay. Um, besides seeing a lot of guards, is there like anything happening? Like other people going inside, like going in and out of the rubble or anything like that? From the outside, you can't see anything happening. There may be some people inside, you don't know. Okay, okay. Yeah, I remember that crack that I snuck into, so I just kind of want to go to the same area and look through and see if I can see anything. Okay, there are two guards in the back. Mm, how, um, I was wondering if there's a way I could stealth, but if, if they're like right in front of it, that's really not possible. Um, let me think. They have all entrances pretty well covered. Mm -hmm. There are at least two guards at every potential entry into the Bard Rock Cafe. Mm -hmm. Could try to draw them away with something mm -hmm. or anything, but you don't think that straight stealthing your way in is going to work as it's just streets all around. Yeah. Rook's thinking, is there really anything she wants to see inside that she hasn't seen already? She's not that sure. So, I think Rook's going to move on to the castle district. Okay. Run into no problems. Uh, as you're moving away from the entrance to the castle district into the district itself, uh, you do... Go ahead and roll a perception check. I want to see. 17 total. Uh, you do not see Felix as he falls in step right behind you. <laughs> okay. He says, Rook, Welcome. I was hoping you'd track me down today. Rook turns around. Sup? How are you feeling? Day after our eventful encounter. Alive. It's a start. You? I'm having a great day. My primary place of business is now rubble. I am housed at the Blackstaff's Tower, which has a lot of tempting targets, but also mages and guards everywhere. I was hoping you might do me some favors. Pricey favors? You know I always pay. I have to make sure, though. What do you need? Well, let me put a pause on this. Let me wrap up Epi's thing real quick, and then we'll come back to this. Yeah. All right. So, Epi. <laughs> yep. For the duration of the night, there is going to be someone in this cellar that you are hiding in. That's understandable. What do you do? So... From my vantage point behind the giant wine barrels, am I able to see the obelisk at all, or am I pretty well hidden so that nobody can see me? Yes to both. If at all possible, I'm going to I'm going to draw it out and write as many of the symbols as I can see from my little vantage point. Okay. This could not have gone better from Epi's point of view. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> And I am probably going to wait and see if, um, if any, or I'm assuming if somebody leaves to go to the bathroom, somebody else comes to relieve them. So there's never a moment where I'm just by myself. Yeah, no, you're not going to be by yourself for a while. Fair enough. So, I think for now they haven't caught me and they don't know I'm down there. But, should they get a little bit too much on my scent... I'm thinking that might be time to use Thaumaturgy. Did anybody find me? <laughs> I'm assuming after several hours they may have. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right, so the Magister comes back and is investigating this obelisk. Roll me a d6. Okay, I'm 
Yeah, a solid three. Okay, so all around the Magister, sand starts to appear. Just sand. And he tries to uh, figure out what's happening, but the sand keeps spawning. And after like about 15, 20 seconds, there's like a lot of sand and it's not stopping. <laughs> oh God, no. So the Magister, he starts to like try to figure out what's going on. He's freaking out. The guard's freaking out. What's going on? I don't know. I just cast Detect Magic and this happened. He tries to, to like, walk away from the sand, the sand is spawning from around him. <laughs> He's having a hard time walking because, again, it's sand. He tries to walk up the steps, but he slips and falls into the sand. Uh, the guard kind of pulls him up out of it, but now the guard's getting sand all around his feet. Uh, he says, get me out of here! Come on! We've gotta go! Uh, and yeah, you watch as they get out of the cellar. There's sand everywhere now. Like, there's a lot of sand. You just watched like 30 seconds and there's now like a foot and a half of sand leading up to that part of the, the cellar and out. But there's, for for the moment... That's a lot of sand. For the moment, it's just you. Okay, I'm going to peek out for just a moment. Is there another way out that is not the sand-covered corridor? There is the hole directly above you. That is the only way out besides the door to the cellar. Okay. I think it's time for the front door of the Bard Rock Cafe to get thaumaturgied so it starts slamming open and shut. Okay, so the front door of the Bard Rock Cafe is opening and shutting. The guards are now looking at that and at the... They're, they're distracted by the Magister who is still spawning sand outside the Bard Rock Cafe. Okay. Which, Rook, you would have seen random sand everywhere. That would have, would have struck you as odd. You're not really near a beach. Excellent. And I am going to, because I can sit it several times, I'm going to have, for my instantaneous sound, somewhere off in the direction very far from the cellar door, the voice of Kevin say, I'm back! The Magister stops and perks up as sand starts to fill up around him. He's here! Get him! He's doing this to me! <laughs> And they all start running towards where the sound originated. Excellent. I am going to, in my sneakiest, sneakiest way, see if I can get away. Roll stealth at advantage because everyone is distracted. Okay. Sparkly tiny black glitter dice has rolled a 15 for the first one. And a 2 for the second one. So, uh, with my... Sled hand bonus, of, or my stealth bonus of one, I rolled a whopping 16. Okay. Uh, you successfully get away from the Bard Rock Cafe. And Epi goes back to the... To the mermaid's arms with just the smuggest cat who ate the canary look on his face. Okay. Appropriate, because curiosity is going to be what gets Epi killed, it looks like. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> Brock. Yes. No, no, not Rook, Brock. Oh, sorry. I wasn't sure if I heard that correctly either. <laughs> but hey, I'm back. Yeah, so you wait about four hours and then the little gnome lady comes over. There's been a cancellation if you would like to be seen now. Yes, yes, please. I'd very much like to take and be seen now. Right. Uh, so just go up to the second story, uh, go talk to the man named Philip. He is, the first door on the right, he is one of our claim filings. And, uh, do I know Philip already? Have I previously met Philip? You have no clue who this is. Okay. All right, so I go up there and I thank the person. Uh, thank you very much, I appreciate your time. Yes, of course, have a seat. So, how can I help you today? Uh, well, uh, you might have heard about the incident that happened at the Bard Rock Cafe yesterday. Well, I'm the proprietor, and I want here to claim my insurance. Ah, yes. That is a very unfortunate occurrence. Never had a meteor strike in the city before, to my knowledge. Anyway, and he pulls out this massive file that is your file. I've taken the liberty of looking through it really quickly. It does look like you have all of your paperwork in order from the creation of this cafe. You have registered with all of the appropriate guilds you are insured and he pulls out your insurance copy which is about 10 pages long said all right so i have here 
our section. Uh, you are a member of our guild, so you are covered. I have gone ahead and applied my seal. I just need you to sign right here. And he hands you one of the pins. Can I just roll investigation to read it over first to make sure that there's nothing that will surprise me? Sure, go ahead. I rolled a whopping three plus one four. Everything seems in order. Awesome. So I go ahead and I sign my seal on that bad boy. I assume that I still have like a noble seal would go with my noble birth. Sure. Uh, and that does give him just the briefest pause where he's like, wonderful, Mr. Song. All right. Now, here is where things get a little aggravating, and I do apologize for this. Because so many different guilds are involved in the upkeep and maintenance of your particular cafe, I am going to need you to go to all of them and get them to notarize and sign their portion of this insurance contract. So you'll see that next on our list, we do have the Order of Locksmiths and Blacksmiths. Uh, they are up in the Nobles District, uh, and it gives you an address. I will need you to go there next. All right, now, is it possible for me to uh, have an agent go in my place, or do I have to personally appear at all of these? Oh, no, you are the policy holder. No one can act in your place. That is unheard of, especially because you have a noble seal. Mm. We have so many scam artists, I would hate for you to be presumed as one of those and run into any of that hairiness. Now, I, I completely understand. I just know that, you know, a lot of times, you know, my family, we had people to take care of paperwork. So I wasn't sure if this is one of those situations, but it's fine. You know, I can actually help you with that. So I can happily give power of attorney to someone of your choosing. We just do have to go over a few tiny paperwork issues first. All right. And he's pulling out the biggest file you've ever seen. All right, I'm gonna. I want to roll. <laughs> I want to roll a perception to get an idea if it will take me longer to go through this. They would be just do all the legwork myself. Go ahead, and roll. That is a seven plus perception is wisdom, right? Yes. Plus zero. You are fairly certain this is going to be a headache, no matter what way you go about it. All right. Yeah. Uh, sure. Do I need the, uh, person here now to go through it? My power of attorney person? Uh, that would be preferable, as they also have to sign all of this. Alright, uh, do you- do we have somebody we can send? I want to get my, uh, I want to get my friend Melody to come here. And where is she? Uh, she's housed in the docks district, uh, near the Bard Rock, but a safe distance away. Mm, I understand. Alright, so what I have here is a form- allowing us to act on your behalf as your messenger. He slides across like a 10 page form. We're going to have to go over some details for it. Yeah. Uh, are you ready? Yes. Okay, he begins going over the form in excruciating detail, giving one of their runners permission to deliver a message and retrieve your friend. All right, fantastic. And I just, I listen intently. Uh, you know, I'm used to this kind of stuff from when I was more on top of my noble duty, so I knew this, I knew to a degree this paperwork's going to be a headache anyway. So after about another 40, 45 minutes, they send a runner out. He says, all right, so they'll be back within one business day with your friend. It's unreasonable to expect them to just come here after all. Uh, so if you would, please make your way back downstairs to the waiting area, and when your friend arrives, please get back in line. All right, no problem. You said you said that we can expect to do things with her tomorrow. Can I just schedule the appointment for tomorrow for all three of us then? Certainly. Here is our appointment scheduling form. If you could please just fill this out and turn it in at the front desk. Thank you. All right. F fantastic. Thank you so much. You've been a big help. I try. Have a lovely day. Yep, and so I uh, go downstairs, fill out the paperwork. Is there somewhere I have to deposit or I have to go through the line to deposit the appointment form? Oh yeah, you have to go back through the line. <laughs> yep, that, I figured as much, and do I see my uh, big buddy from earlier down? Is he still here? Oh yeah, he's still here. All right, and uh, how's he doing? He is currently, he is in line with more papers somehow now. You do also see Rook and Felix sitting in the waiting area. And Felix is staring right at you. So, Rook. Yes. Felix tells you... I have a strange sense that our friend 
is not going to have the easiest time getting the Bard Rock Cafe rebuilt by legal means. Huh. So, I was going to offer to, to, to finance it myself. What I would like from you, if you're willing, work with him to help pay off the loan. I do have some jobs lined up that you and him together might be able to work on. Assuming he takes my offer. Uh, you want me to work with someone? Think of it as guarding an investment. Not that I think he would run off. I know where he lives, but it's alone. <laughs> Used to live. I want the cafe back up too. I guess I can help temporarily, of course. Think of it as a favor to me. Sure. Right. Come along, then. Mm -hmm. And he leads you. You guys are waiting the entire 45 minutes that Brock is up there. Okay. Trying in vain to get something done. So, Brock, you... Right. Uh, how far away from my friend, my uh, beefy friend in line am I? Uh, you're pretty close to the back right now. He's about halfway up the line. Okay. All right. So I can't spark conversation with him. No. And all right. If I'm already close to the back, I actually I'm not worried about my spot because I've already lost most of my day and I can leave once I file this paperwork. So I come to check in with you two. Brock, having a productive day? Uh, it's not. It's not unproductive. What have you accomplished? Uh, the first of approximately 20 forms to get the Bard Rock refilled. Well. That's that's 5% of what I was hoping to accomplish today, so that's something. This is, unfortunately, the ugly side of working with the guilds. They are good for what they do, but when it comes time for them to pay up, they're not very helpful. I'd like to offer you a different, more expedient solution. I'm listening. You know what I do for a living. You know who I am. Yes, you sell cat goods. Yes, yes, and it's a very lucrative cat goods business. I would like to offer you a loan. By my estimation, the Bard Rock will take about twelve to 13,000 gold to rebuild. I am happy to loan you that, if you're willing to pay me back by doing odd jobs around town. I have a few, and I know there's going to be work. This is Waterdeep, after all. It seems more expedient for everyone, and I have a personal vested interest in our relationship continuing. Uh, it sounds good, and I'm sure, you know, even regardless of when the loan gets paid off, uh, once my, uh, I, I'll have them take care of the paperwork for me here, and I'm sure they'll reimburse me for some of the work as long as we use the guilds for the repairs. Oh, yes. Don't worry about that. So, that it sounds like a win-win, but uh, I do have one odd job I'd like to volunteer for if, uh, if it lines up to your interest. It probably won't pay much, but uh, I, I really feel for somebody else who is here today. Oh. And I kind of gesture over to a uh, big guy. Apparently, he has a rat problem. Uh, that probably would only take me a uh, take me and, uh, and maybe a couple of friends. We can round up, you know, a night to fit and take care of. I think we could probably kill some rats. Oh, certainly. Ah, uh, I recognize him. He works at the General Goods Store. Poor fellow. That's going to be in the Southern District. I'll tell you what. I have one other person I'd like to round up, just to make sure that everyone is working together towards the same goals. His name is Epi, Epimetheus, the Raven Queen's cleric that raised the man yesterday. Oh. I have a feeling that it's in everyone's interest to keep close tabs on that one too. I don't know if you've heard, but the clerics have lost their spellcasting. I did hear. But not Epimetheus. <laughs> I have a vested interest in knowing what's going on there. And I was able to heal with magic as well, so it seems it's only the clerics and it's not actually healing magic. Indeed. Curious that the gods have gone silent. So, let's round up Epimetheus, and then I can direct you all to the general goods store where their rat problem is happening. I'm sure they'd be happy to have your assistance. Alright, and I... That sounds good. And then I approach my, uh, my friend and say, uh... 
Hey, uh, tell you what, I, I actually have a lot of free time. How would you like it if I took care of your rat problem? Uh, listen, I'm just the gopher. Uh, if you, if you want to take care of that, go pay a visit to the store. Uh, he hands you a, a flyer, and on the flyer it says, The General's General Goods Store for All Your General Needs. And it has an address in the Southern District. It says, just tell them that, that Frederick sent you, and they'll... They'll set you on the right path. All right. Thank you. It's been a pleasure meeting you today, Frederick. And I hold out my handshake to him one more time. Uh, he, he shakes your hand again. Yep. Uh, he has... He's like, I, I got to spend the rest of my day here. This is my job today. Yep. I, I understand. Having spent most of the day here myself, I completely understand. Best of luck to you. You as well. Oh, I was just going to say, can I use my thieves cant to ask him if I should follow Brock? Or just ask him straight up? Should I follow him? To which Felix says, sure. Let's all go together. It's a fun little adventure. And that's where we'll end episode two. We all make mistakes. Spending too much on innkeeper's insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Did your tavern get pillaged by pirates? Maybe your inn was ransacked by bandits? Maybe your cafe was struck by a natural disaster? No problem. Join the innkeeper's guild today. Filing a claim is quick, simple, and easy. 15 hours can save you 15% or more on your inn repairs. Thank you for listening to Bard Rock Cafe. You can find more episodes on sassygamers.com. Have you considered becoming a patron? You can get wild rewards like access to our patrons-only Discord, tarot readings from Rook, and access to exclusive one-shot campaigns set in the Bard Rock universe, led by our DM, Kenny. Visit patreon.com slash bardrockcafe to find out more. Until next time, rock on!